Hello dear students, welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterizations, lecture number 22. I'm Dr. Pravez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, uh, again, so we will continue our discussions on the X-ray diffraction. Uh, this is part number 6. Uh, uh, and here, uh, we will have a discussion on sources of error and XRD data. Uh, that is, uh, simply, we will talk about sample displacement, uh, axial divergence, uh, plates, which means error, poor counting statistics, and uh, sample transparency error. So these are the topics of today's discussion. So let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture. So uh, today's lecture topic is sources of error in XRD data. So we will discuss one by one uh, the sort of the data, and then uh, we will suggest the possible uh, solutions for uh, the reported uh, error in the data. So the first uh, uh, type of the error in the XRD data uh, is called a sample displacement. And uh, sample displacement occur uh, when the sample is not on the focusing circle. You know that uh, there is a focusing circle that we have discussed uh, in our previous lecture. So uh, uh, we, have, we, we have an error in data uh, that is called uh, sample displacement. So this sort of the error occurs uh, when the sample is not on the focusing circle or in the center of the ganeometer's uh, circle. So you know about the ganeometer circle because we have discussed that in the previous uh, lecture. So the greatest source, this is the greatest source of the error and the most data uh, in uh, a systematic error. This sort of the error occurs systematically according to the relations that is uh, delta to theta is equal to minus 2s cos theta uh, divided by r. So theta, we remember it's, uh, it must be an uh, radian. So here uh, you can see in this relations, uh, in this relation this s is the amount of the displacement and r is the ganeometer uh, radius. So uh, if we have a value uh, that is uh, we have assumed here uh, at 28.4 uh, degree to theta, so S uh, will be equal to uh, 0 0.006, uh, well result and the peak shape of 0 0.08 uh, degree. I mean, this is uh, how the sample displacement error occur, and this is the relations. And here we have uh, assumed that if this is uh, the value of the theta uh, to theta. So uh, this will be the value of S and uh, accordingly uh, the peak shaft, uh, the peak will be shifted by uh, this much. So uh, what is the remedy or uh, what is the solutions uh, for correcting this sort of the error? So this sort of the error can be minimized by using zero background sample holder. So the sample solutions uh, for uh, correcting the sample displacement error uh, that uh, we can minimize it uh, by using zero background uh, sample holders. And it can also be corrected uh, by using an internal uh, calibration standard. Uh, and uh, it can be analyzed and compensated for uh, with many data analysis uh, algorithm. So for sample ID, uh, uh, sampley, uh, remember that your P positions uh, may be shifted a little a bit. So uh, this is, uh, I mean, how you can do with the uh, sample displacement uh, error. Uh, uh, sample displacement, uh, I mean, if, if there is sample displacement error in your data, uh, so uh, I mean, so you can do the following uh, arrangement in order to minimize or in order to correct uh, that error in your uh, data. Uh, and along with that, uh, uh, we can also eliminate uh, this sort of the error uh, by using parallel beam optics. So you know what is mean by uh, parallel beam uh, optics. So other sources of the error, uh, the first one is uh, axial divergence. So what is axial divergence and how axial divergence occur? So axial divergence occur due to the divergence of the X-ray beam and a plane uh, with the sample uh, which create asymmetric broadening of the peak uh, toward the low t theta angles and uh, it creates peak shape uh, towards uh, a negative below 90 degree to theta 
and positive about uh, 90 degree uh, to theta. So this sort of the error, uh, it can be reduced uh, by solar sled or capillary uh, lenses. I mean the axial divergence sort of the error, uh, I mean we can reduce uh, by solar sled or uh, capillary lenses. I mean, by the use of these sort of the, uh, I mean, apparatus uh, or the arrangement, we can simply reduce the axial uh, divergence. Another type of the error is called uh, flat specimens error. So, this sort of the error uh, basically occur at the uh, surface. Uh, so, uh, the entire surface of a flat specimens uh, cannot lie on the focusing circle. Uh, so, it's create a systematic broadening towards a uh, low to theta angles, uh, which is uh, reduced by, uh, I mean, uh, it can be reduced by small divergent slats. Uh, it can be eliminated by parallel beam uh, optic. I mean, a uh, plate species means error. Uh, I mean, is is uh, here we have the reasons for the, uh, that how uh, plate species means error occur, uh, but here it can be reduced or it can be eliminated by uh, uh, by two things. One, uh, if you want to reduce it, so it can be reduced uh, by small divergence slit. And if you want to eliminate it, so it can be eliminated by uh, parallel beam optics. I mean, we have the apparatus, uh, uh, I mean, or we have the devices with the help of which we can easily overcome uh, the errors uh, that occur in the uh, XRD analysis. So poor counting statistic. Uh, so uh, what is mean by poor uh, counting statistic? Or uh, how it's occur and how we can uh, reduce or how we can uh, eliminate this sort of the error. So the sample you know that uh, is made up thousands of randomly oriented crystallite, as assumed by most analysis uh, analysis technique. So the sample might be textured or have proper orientations uh, which create a systematic error in the peak uh, intensity uh, as a result of which some peaks might be entirely absent. So uh, the sample might have large grain size which we have already discussed. I mean if we have this sort of the, uh, I mean uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, error in the peak intensity or we say some peaks uh, uh, they are being absent, so we should focus on that the sample might have a larger grain size. So, if you remember in last lectures, uh, we we have discussed that uh, if the sample's uh, size is greater than 10 microns, uh, so uh, we can have these sort of the errors. Uh, we can have problem in intensity of the peak, and uh, uh, it's possible that some peaks might be uh, absent from the regular XRD fraction. And here again, we are mentioning the same thing. Uh, that uh, it's uh, this kind of uh, the poor county statistic may occur because of the uh, larger grain size of the sample. So as a result of this, it will produce random peak intensity or spotty diffraction pattern. So larger grain size, if we have a sample that is being made from larger grain size, uh, I mean the limits we have mentioned uh, that is of 10 uh, micron. So the sample is greater than 10 micron. Uh, that is being considered as larger grain size. Uh, so it will produce random peak intensities or we will have a spotty diffraction peak in our XRD uh, pattern. Uh, we have sample transparency error. Uh, so uh, in this sort of the error, X-ray penetrate uh, into your sample. Uh, so the depth of penetration uh, in such a conditions uh, depend upon the mass uh, absorption coefficient of your sample and the incident angle of the uh, X-ray uh, beam. So this sort of the error uh, is produced uh, error because not all the X-rays are diffracted from uh, the same locations. I mean, a sample transparency error uh, is occur, uh, and here is the reason why it's occur. Uh, this kind of error occur, uh, and the reason is. Uh, the reason is that that all X-rays are diffracting from uh, the same location. So we have angular error and peak asymmetry. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, and this sort of the error is greatest for the organic and 
low observing uh, sample from low observing sample uh, here we mean uh, sample with the low atomic uh, number uh, what is the solutions for sample transparency error so this sort of the error uh, can be uh, eliminated by using a parallel beam optic or it can be reduced by uh, using a thin uh, sample so uh, you people have observed that uh, if we use uh, parallel beam optics or we use thin sample uh, so uh, that's that's uh, i mean the key source that we can eliminate uh, many of the error in the uh, xrd analysis so the best thing uh, while you are, you are analyzing your sample in xrd you want to overcome most of the error the possible error so it's better to use a thin sample and it's better to use uh, the proper optics of the proper uh, slat uh, during your uh, xrd analysis so i hope uh, you understood uh, the possible uh, errors and their uh, i mean the, the precaution that how you can eliminate those error so there's all for this error thanks uh, uh, this is all for this lecture uh, thanks for watching stay tuned for the next lecture uh, that will be on the uh, techniques in the xrd scf so stay tuned for the next lecture till then bye bye